Okay, howdy guys. Um, so today I want to show you how to put together a nice shiny map projection like the one I have in front of me. I've added a couple of tools recently, uh, the placement and capping tools, and what they let you do is actually lay out uh, continents and land masses um, adjusting for distortion on a globe. And the cool thing about doing it this way, as I'll show you in a minute, um, is that it lets you paint without any distortion at all and then place um, map parts, I like these different continents that I have here, um, it actually lets you place them uh, and the distortion sort of just happens by magic. The way this works, uh, there is a new system called the composition system. Now compositions, um, they're a weird thing to wrap your head around, so I will do my best in this little video to explain that. Um, but the basic workflow for this is that you take a whole pile of smaller maps, and I've got a whole pile here. I've got three continents uh, that I have just put here uh, on the, uh, well, sort of closest to the equator, um, relatively speaking. And I also have a North Pole, uh, this map just here, which is mapped to the top. It's a little bit less clear because of the polar distortion, but I'll show you how that works in a second. And what I've basically done is the, uh, the capping tool and the placement tool, um, they actually put these continents onto the world um, and yeah, they adjust for distortion. So what I'm going to do, I'll just open up these continents. I'll show you how they're meant to look just by themselves. So this is the first continent that I have. Um, it's relatively square, except for this funny little area in the bottom right hand corner. I've got this one just here, which is a little bit more emaciated. The third one, which is a little bit smaller still. And this North Pole. Now the North Pole looks like this. It's quite round. It has a mountain in the middle. And when I go to my globe view, if I just grab my world map again, um, if I go to my globe view, you'll see if I just fiddle with some settings to make this a little bit more appealing. Um, if I go up to the top, okay, you can see here is my North Pole. Uh, I'll just get this out of the way. Here's my North Pole, um, and it looks just like it did on that uh, earlier map. So if I just open that up just to show you again, this is what the North Pole is meant to look like. Now on my globe, the world map, if I go into globe view, it looks just like it did in this original map just here. Um, but if I actually go to my, my map projection, you can see it looks very different. It's this big stretched thing up here. Um, and the way I did this um, and the way I placed these, um, they are the, uh, the two tools I was talking about earlier. So I've got this placement tool and the capping tool. So what I'm going to do is create a composition and actually show you how it all fits together. Just the gist of it is that it lets you place smaller maps onto a larger world projection um, and it sort of all just adjusts for distortion for you. To actually paint these maps, you don't have to worry about distortion at all. So these these maps, these smaller sub maps, are completely distortion free. So they are just painted to scale um, using regular brushes and regular methods. Okay, so the first step in this process is to actually make a composition itself. Now the compositions, uh, there are a new tab in the document editor. Um, you just click on that, hit create new, give it a name. I'm just going to call it world because I'm boring. And there we go. So we've got this uh, world composition here now. I'm going to set that as my active composition. Okay, you've got to make sure it's set as active because you can have as many of these as you want and Jambrush needs to know which one you want to use. So, yep, okay, there we are. So I've got my world composition there. Now, setting the composition, uh, when you first do it, it doesn't actually do anything. You'll notice nothing changes um, and there's a reason for that and that is that I haven't actually got anything in my composition just yet. I'm going to just level uh, this entire world map just back down to zero so that I can start afresh. Um, but basically, this is just a very large uh, 8K by 4K equirectangular map. There's nothing on it at the moment. What I'm going to do is use the placement tool first to place my continents somewhere near the equator. So I'm going to grab uh, continent one, I think. So in the uh, the placement tool, okay, I've got a whole pile of options over here. Um, I won't fiddle with a lot of them, but what I'll be doing is just selecting the continent that I want to use. Okay, so I'll just start with continent one. And as soon as you select one, you'll notice that you get this interesting widget appear on the main panel. And this widget shows you what the distortion is going to look like before you place your continent. So the first continent, I'm just going to put that somewhere near the equator. So if I place that down, okay, it will plonk that continent down. And if you place it near the equator, there's very little distortion near the equator and you don't get a lot of stretching. If I place it way up here, however, you can see it splays out quite a lot. And the distortion near the northern pole is actually very, very, very severe, just like the distortion near the southern pole. If I were to place a map really close to the poles like this, 
I wouldn't do it using the placement tool. The placement tool is really just for the, the middle two thirds to three quarters of the map. I wouldn't place a continent in the lower or upper quarter using the placement tool. And the reason is that even though it adjusts for distortion, it doesn't just it doesn't adjust completely. When you place something up this far, you're always going to get a bit of distortion. If I go to the globe map, you'll see it's sort of adjusted for distortion in a lot of places, but when it gets right up to the pole, the math just doesn't quite work and it wraps around and you get this funny swirl. So if you want a whirlpool at the top of your map, that's how you can do it, but generally speaking, most people aren't interested in that. So for placing these continents, okay, I'm just going to plonk a couple down. I'll place that one there, continent two here, and continent three over here. Now, I've got those three maps, okay? They've been placed. They haven't got a lot of distortion, okay, because the tool has adjusted for that. Um, but now let's say I want to place the northern pole. I select the north pole with the placement tool, and if I, if I plonk it up here using the placement tool, we're going to get that funny swirling. So what we need to use instead of the placement tool for placing polar caps is the capping tool. So I'm going to go into the capping tool, select the northern pole, and I want the north pole. You can do north or south, obviously, and then the map center I will explain in a minute. We've got cap angle and coverage. I'll explain all those in a second. But if I just hit apply, it should just place the northern pole up there. Now it's splayed it out. It's gone a little bit too far down toward the equator, though, because it's sort of covering up uh, a lot of these other uh, continents that I placed um, actually quite far north, some of these are. So what I'm going to do is just undo that, reduce the coverage, okay, which will change uh, the degree to which the pole extends down to the equator, and that will just sort of shrink it up here. And the consequence of that is that it looks much smaller on the globe. So if I just undo that um, and increase the coverage again, um, hit apply, you'll notice that the globe, it, it looks a lot bigger on the globe. The, um, the northern pole is huge. So if I just undo that, reduce the coverage and apply it again, I'll try and get it so that it's only just touching the tip. There we go. Okay, it's only just touching the tip of these uh, other land masses. So I've got my, my world map. This is how I want it to look. What I've done here is I've, I've gone and placed all of these continents and things using the placement and capping tools, but my composition doesn't actually have anything in it yet. In order to actually put any of this stuff into my composition, I need to record the placements that I, I make. So I'm going to undo all of this, just control Z, go through them. There we are. I'm going to go back to my placement tool. And before I was just using the placement tool willy nilly. I wasn't actually um, recording any composition uh, elements with it. So if I just use it normally, it'll project things onto my projection, but it won't actually record them to the composition. In order to do that, I have to go down to the composition section of my tool options and hit record. Okay, and what that will do is it will create an entry every time I make a placement. Okay, so I've got these two different entries for continent one. When I press on these, or when I click on them, I get the information for that particular placement coming down into the part info. Okay, so these two options here, these two parts, they are currently in my composition, the one that I created here. Okay, so they are currently in this one here called world. And you can see their settings down here. Okay, the position where I applied them, uh, the map that I am actually pasting down, the scale and whether or not we are warping. Okay, and we can turn off warping by unchecking the option there. So I've got these several uh, options here. I can obviously just remove them if I want to. I'm gonna try and make a final one. So I'm just going to undo these, hit warp, and I reckon I'll do the continent, the first continent just here. Okay, so I'm going to pop continent one just there. Now, if I want to change the scale, for instance, I could change it just here. Um, and then if I hit F6 or go up to edit, apply composition, it's going to clear the entire map and reapply the composition parts that I have recorded, i.e. this one just here. So it's reapplied it. The scale is much lower because I've just changed it. I can change it back again, obviously, and I can change it as many times as I want. So I'm just going to go one and one, hit F6, and it will just reapply it. Okay, so the placement parts, okay, for the placement tool, the placement part of the composition, they all appear here in the placement tool in this little list. Now, I've placed continent one, I'm going to place continent two now, I might do that a little bit smaller, I might make that a bit more southern, there we go, and I'll do continent three, maybe sort of way in the middle there. Okay, or I might make that one a little bit bigger. 
There we go, awesome, cool. So I've placed all three of my uh, continents. You can see that I have two entries for continent three, and that's because I was recording when I placed my uh, erroneous one that was too small. So what I'm gonna do is just grab the one that I made that was too small and just remove it. Okay, so I've got only one entry per continent. So now that I've got these three entries and I'm happy with them, I'm gonna leave them as they are. I'm not gonna to touch them again. What I'm gonna do now is paste the North Pole down. I do that with the capping tool. So I grab that, grab the North Pole, um, I think that's the coverage I used last time, which I think I was happy with. So let's hit apply. There we go. Okay. I want it to line up with this uh, continent just here. So I'm going to make it slightly bigger. Perfect. That's a little bridge I wanted. So obviously in order to um, put this into my composition, I need to record it. So I'm just going to undo, hit record, hit apply. And after a short wait, it appears in my composition parts. Now you'll notice that none of the other parts that I had earlier, the placement parts, okay, the parts that I added to my composition using the placement tool, they don't appear in the composition parts for the capping tool. Okay, capping parts and placement parts are very are, are completely different things. So they they appear in separate lists. So I've got my North Pole here. Again, I can click on that and actually edit the parts. I could switch the pole if I wanted and then hit F6. And after a short delay, once it's recalculated everything, it will be applied to my Southern Pole instead. So I can do that. I'm just gonna change it back. There we go, okay. So now that I have this composition here and all these different parts have been recorded, I can save my composition. I can save it to a different file. Um, I can export it um, as its own standalone file. I can save the document and all of that information will be recorded. Okay, if I closed GenBrush right now, I could open the document back up, click on my world map and hit F6 and it would reproject all of these different components back into the exact same places at exactly the same scale. So that's what the composition system does. It, it takes the um, capping tool and the placement tool. Whenever you use them, you can record how you use them um, and it will record which maps go where and you will always get this exact same projection. And the cool bit is that if I now go into my maps, click on continent one, for example, and set that as my height source, I can now edit this continent and reapply it to my projection without really having to lift a finger. So I'm just going to go and grab the smooth brush and just make a very obvious uh, gigantic meteor crater or something in the middle of it. Okay. In fact, you know what? I'm going to be silly and I'm going to make a little smiley face. Okay. He's kind of freaky, but that's okay. So I've got my changes now to this map. And what I'm going to do is go back to my world map, set that as the height source. Hit F6 and the changes I just made to this map are going to be reprojected onto my projection. Now I can make the map um, completely different if I wanted to. I could completely destroy uh, all of that land that I have in continent one um, and uh, rebuild it from the ground up. Go back to my world map and hit F6 or again just go up to apply composition here and it would reapply that same map in the same place with the same distortion. So what it basically means is that when once you've recorded where different continents go, um, you can edit them without worrying about distortion. You edit them just as they are locally here um, to scale. And then when you actually want to create your projection, you just go back to your world map, hit a button, and it all just gets reprojected for you. So the, the reason I've sort of done this uh, this way and the reason GemBrush is built this way is because A, uh, it helps you break down your map into smaller parts, which is just a good uh, tenet of project management in any case. Um, whenever you're doing a big, big, big map um, and you want lots of detail, it's generally not a good practice to just squash all of that information into one, one image. The way I generally make maps is I, I do high detail maps of smaller local areas, and then I uh, create larger world projections like this one um, usually without smiley faces in them. Um, I create larger world projections like this one, um, but I don't include all the detail that I normally would um, uh, from a lot of my smaller maps. Because if I'm doing uh, an 8K by 8K um, uh, you know, rendition of this, this continent here, for example, um, if this area was 8K by 8K, uh, and I had that area as part of my larger world projection, this image would have to be enormous to accommodate an 8K by 8K map. But this way, you can have this continent as an 8K by 8K uh, map, and you can still have all the detail here, but when you go to create the actual projection, um, you don't need all of that detail in here. 
Um, so you just project uh, as much of it to the projection as is necessary um, for however big the projection is. Um, so it means that you can split the project up into multiple parts. You can have lots of detail uh, on your local to scale maps. And then when you actually project them uh, to the world, obviously at no point have you had to paint projection or muck around with distortion or warping or anything. It all just sort of gets applied um, and you don't really have to think about it. It's just an afterthought. Now there are plenty of different options with these uh, tools um, and I'll go through a couple of them now. Um, first, I want to talk about the cap tool because the cap tool has some really interesting options. I, I showed earlier um, you can change the coverage, which will change how far down the map the uh, pole actually extends. What I didn't show you is that the um, pole can actually be rotated in a couple of things. This pole here, um, North Pole, what I'm going to do, I'm not actually going to use the projection tool. I'm actually going to go down here into the part information and just change this stuff. So what this stuff is, these are all of the settings that you used with the capping tool uh, when you hit apply or when I hit apply earlier. Now again, I already showed you I can change the, the pole if I want to. Um, I can change the coverage, which is again how far down the map extends. But there are two other variables here. There's the center and the angle. Now the angle is pretty simple. Um, all that does is basically tell GEMBrush um, how you want this to be oriented up, up here on the top of the map. So if I were to change this to, I don't know, 20 degrees, for instance, if I now hit F6, what you'll notice is the whole thing sort of gets spun around. Um, and if I change it again to maybe 60 degrees, hit F6, it gets spun around again. So what this um, globe view does, it actually it, it sort of shows you a bit clearer um, just exactly what's happening with this, uh, glow, uh, with this northern pole. If I show you on the flat projection, um, it will be a little bit harder to see. If I just change this back to 40, hit F6, you can sort of see it gets shifted to the right or the left depending on how I'm changing it. Um, but the shifting on this map translates to rotation on this on this globe view. So really what's happening is this, this northern pole is being swung around uh, on its axis on the, on the north pole here. Now, the other variable, the center variable, that's another good one. Uh, this one is actually really cool. What that variable does, um, if I go into my North Pole map, okay, th this map is uh, 2K by 2K, so 2048 by 2048. Um, and what GEMBrush lets you do is actually uh, tell the, pro you can actually tell the program exactly which point uh, on your map is going to be the precise North Pole. So when you uh, choose the North Pole from the uh, capping tool list, it automatically assumes the map center is going to be halfway across and halfway down. So because this map is 2K by 2K, GEMBrush assumes that the center of your pole is going to be 1K by 1K, which is right in the middle. I can change that though. So if I want the Northern Pole instead to be this lower depressed region just here, what I can do is just up here uh, in the map data when I move my cursor around you can see the position. If I just mouse over this lake, uh, it's about 617, 787. So what I'm going to do here is uh, 6, oops, sorry, 617 I think it was. And the other number is, uh, what was it, let me think, other number is 791, okay. So that point just there lines up just here on this little lake. If I now go back to my world projection and hit F6, um, you'll notice something really cool happens. Uh, the northern pole changes and you'll, you'll actually get this um, sort of like a sine wave uh, through the whole thing. And the reason there's a sort of like a sine wave curve here is that when you look onto the, uh, the globe, um, the, the pole is actually being projected around this point instead. Um, and that point doesn't actually have to be anywhere on the northern pole map. It can actually be um, way off to the side. And what that will do is sort of swing this continent around the pole. Um, so if you want to place something not quite at the north pole, but pretty close, you can use the capping tool to sort of swing it around the northern pole area. So that's what the centering uh variable just here does. It just changes where the North Pole on that North Pole map actually actually is sort of inside the map. Those are all the options for the capping tool. Uh, again, it's it's 
really handy, um, lets you do a lot of interesting stuff. But I'll just show you now the placement tool and all of its various options. Um, really, there are only a couple. I, I showed earlier um, the distortion warping. Uh, this is just, you, you can turn this off and actually just place uh, maps um, completely flat uh, without any projection distortion whatsoever. So the placement tool, you can use them for sort of stamping down, um, for example, if you have a mountain saved in a small map somewhere and you want to place that mountain onto another map, you can absolutely do that. Um, so the distortion warping just turns on the uh, polar distortion, essentially, is what it's doing. The scale, um, that one you can just hold down control and scroll. Um, that one's pretty easy. I generally don't tend to type it in unless I need to reset it to one or something. Um, and then in the actual part information, it gives you the position that you clicked on um, for the placement. So if I wanted to move uh, continent one 100 units to the left, I could go up here, type in 3100 instead of 3200. And when I hit F6, it'll move it over slightly. Okay. Uh, likewise, if I changed it to 3000 rather than 3100, hit F6, and it moves over 100 pixels. So these options here, these are saved into your composition. You can save this composition, um, you could duplicate it, you could edit it. What you can also do is uh, duplicate this. Um, I'll add a duplication option to the document editor in a minute after I record this video. Um, you can duplicate this and go into all the different continent parts and whatnot and reposition them slightly and create several different uh, distinct compositions for different times. Uh, in your world's history and get a sort of uh, uh, almost, I suppose, like a tectonic movement uh, kind of timeline going. Um, it wouldn't be perfect because obviously uh, you would need to um, change the, the look and the feel of your maps as they distort, as the tectonic plates you know, collide and pull apart. Um, GemBrush can't render that sort of thing yet. I'd, I'd like to be able to, but it can't do it quite yet. So it's a bit of a work in progress, but if you just want the continents to move around, um, you can do that. You can absolutely do that. So the composition, again, it just holds this information, uh, these placement parts and these capping parts. But yes, the um, <laughs> that was a bit of a long-winded explanation. I, I hope I went into enough detail for people. As I said, you can have as many compositions as you want, and all they do is hold on to this data with all of these parts in it. So yeah, look, I'm, I'm really looking forward to people's opinions uh, on how this works. It's a really neat system, I think, um, and I'm, I'm hoping that it will suit most people's needs. I still want to work on a whole pile of other projection features I'm not going to stop here, but this is one of the main ways in GemBrush that people will interact with map projection on a, on a sort of a regular basis. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how you guys, how you guys use it. And uh, yeah, I, I really look forward to hearing your feedback about it.